this short video i uh, will be discussing some important tips regarding the mail alignment in mail refactors every resident must have experienced some situation in which even after appropriate reduction of the flexure fragments the mortise is still not aligned so we'll be seeing why these things happen and what are the solutions for these problems so this is the 3d model of a normal ankle joint you see there is lateral medullus there is medial medullus and it is perfectly aligned with the talus and this is the anteroposterior radiograph in which you see lateral medullus, medial medullus, and talus perfectly aligned. But to get a proper orientation of the ankle joint, that means whether the joint space is symmetrical or not, you need a mortise view. That is 20 degree to 30 degree internal rotation view, in which the lateral joint space is also visible clearly. Now, for the fracture fixation point of view, you need to be aware about the Weber's classification of ankle fractures in which the lateral medullus has been used as marker for classifying the fractures. That means there is infrasyndesmotic injury if the lateral medullus fragment is below the syndesmosis, then there is transsyndesmotic injury if the lateral medullus is at the level of syndesmosis, and then there is suprasyndesmotic injury if the lateral medullus fracture is above the level of syndesmosis. Now, this is a picture of infrasyndesmotic injury in which the fracture is lying below the level of syndesmosis now even if there is fracture below the level of syndesmosis that, that means the syndesmosis is likely to be intact even then the ankle can be unstable why because the body support on the lateral side is lost and on medial side even if there is no fracture there can be injury to the deltoid ligament if the deltoid ligament is torn that means there will be translation of the talus along with the lateral medullus fragment laterally so in a normal situation what we do we reduce the fragment and fix with a lateral medullar plate with multiple locking screws. Anatomical fibular plate is usually used because of the locking construct it provides that adds to the stability of the reconstruction. Now another situation in which the fracture is at the level of syndesmosis. That would mean that the proximal fragment here would be having intact syndesmosis and the fragment here can have intact syndesmosis if the ankle joint is perfectly aligned but if it is subluxated laterally that means the attachment of syndesmosis here is disrupted. Therefore, the ankle mortise is, is translating laterally along with the medial clear space because of the probable injury to the deltoid ligament. Now, if the deltoid ligament is not injured, then there is possibility that the fracture will remain aligned like this situation. But if the deltoid is injured, then there may be translation here if the syndesmosis part which is attached to this fragment is also injured. Again, in this situation, we will fix the lateral medullus if the alignment appears to be good like this then nothing needs to be done but suppose you have fixed the lateral medullus and still you are getting this clear space that means torn fibers of deltoid ligament are entrapped in this area you need to open it clear it and repair it then reduce the lateral medullus now this is another situation in which the fracture is at the level above the syndesmosis that is supra syndesmotic lateral medullar fracture now if the syndesmosis is intact in this area then there will be picture like this because of no translation of the mortise but if the syndesmosis part is injured here that means lateral medullus will be unstable and whole of the mortise will shift towards the lateral side but there should be some deltoid ligament injury also you need to reduce the fracture and fix with the fibular plate then assess for any syndesmotic instability there is likely to be syndesmotic instability which needs a syndesmotic screw here parallel to the ankle mortise and around one to two centimeter above the level of joint so the syndesmotic screw will lie somewhere here once you have reduced everything fixed a syndesmotic screw then you have to assess for the medial clear space usually after reduction of the lateral medullus and placement of syndesmotic screw this clear space becomes uniform but if it's not becoming uniform then you need to loosen up the syndesmotic screw open the joint medially again look for any torn fiber of deltoid ligament that are entrapped at the ankle joint at the medial side and then remove those fibers then clear the joint space and repair the deltoid ligament if required sometimes the medial side tendons like fhl and tbls posterior tendon can also get entrapped in this area after the injury therefore if the mortise is not uniform even after fixation fibula and put placement of syndesmotic screw you need to open it up to look for any ligament or tendon lying in this area and once that is done then you have to replace the syndesmotic screw and restore the ankle mortise now these were the situations when there was isolated lateral medullus fracture now there is a situation in which there is lateral medullus fracture as well as medial medullus fracture suppose this is a situation in which there is infra syndesmotic injury to the ankle joint now there will be translation on the lateral side even if all the ligaments are intact why because the bony support here is disrupted and the bony support here is also disrupted so whole of this segment is not in continuity with the proximal fragment therefore 
this segment can definitely translate either laterally or medially it can go anywhere now the usual fixation method would be to fix fibula first and then fix the medial malleolus but suppose you have reduced the fibula with minor angulation which you will not be able to see on the lateral side so there will be some angulation here even minor angulation like one degree two degree which might not be visible macroscopically then that angulation is going to create more displacement on the medial side as we can see in this picture a small angulation on the lateral side that is two degree angulation can create a displacement of around two millimeter on the medial side that means if you have fixed the fibula in slightest angulation that would translate into a larger displacement of the talus or you can say increase in joint space medially by two millimeter so this picture denotes the same so the lateral mesial structure here is malaligned with a minor angulation still the translation of talus downwards is high because of the increased component of this angulation medially so if we are fixing the medial malleus after that that would result in asymmetric space here and you will not be able to know what went wrong because this small angulation you were not able to see because th that was lying inside the joint you were able to see only this part so this is going to complicate things and you are not able to confirm what went wrong you might try to place a syndesmotic screw here but that will not help because this is an angulation this is not a translation of talus laterally syndesmotic screw will help only if the lateral column is translated laterally here the lateral column is not translated laterally therefore the syndesmotic screw is not going to help rather it may over compress the syndesmosis so that is not going to help now another situation here the injury is supra syndesmotic there will be likely injury to the syndesmosis and there will be lateral translation of the talus along with the lateral malleus here the deltoid ligament is not injured here the medial malleus is structured so whole of this block will translate laterally or it can translate in any direction because of the instability now the usual thing again will be to fix fibula first but if there is slight angulation at the structure side which might not be visible macroscopically again they will be tailored tilt because the talus will take the direction of the lateral malleus because of the ligamentous attachment between talus and the lateral malleus and once you have fixed the lateral malleus and then try to stabilize the medial malleus there will be asymmetry here and here why because the fibula is fixed in an abnormal position which you are not able to appreciate clinically again this is going to create a problem you'll not be able to confirm what went wrong even after placement of syndesmotic screw you'll not be able to confirm what is the issue now similar situation will occur when there is trans syndesmotic injury if there is injury to the ligaments here there will be translation of whole medial malleus talus and lateral malleus block in medial or lateral direction again you'll try to fix the fibula first and if there is minor malalignment on the letter side which is not visible macroscopically there will be slight tilt of the talus towards the fibula and in an attempt to reduce the medial malleus you'll get asymmetry of the joint now you see this is the bimalar fracture which is infra syndesmotic injury because the syndesmosis part is here it appears to be uniform and intact and the terminal part of the lateral malleus is fractured and it is migrated laterally along with the medial malleus what the surgeon has done he has tried to fix the fibula first with an anatomical locking plate even supported the fixation posteriorly because of the combination it appears to be done appropriately but you see there is some angulation of the talus here you see the talus is slightly angulated downwards and there is asymmetric medial clear space it is not uniform now this problem is probably happened because of the slight angulation of the fibula here now to correct it the surgeon has remolded the plate to reduce the angulation here you see the angulation here is less compared to the angulation here so by doing that he is able to restore the medial clear space the medial clear space now appears uniform along with the space of the mortise so this appears to be normal along with the clear space in the mortise now this is an example you see there is comminuted fracture of lateralis which is supra syndesmotic syndesmosis appears to be intact here because of the overlap between the distal tibia and lateral malleus what the surgeon has done he has again tried to fix the fibula first and then the medial malleus but you see in post operative radiographs there is still a tilt of talus downwards along with the increased medial joint space which is asymmetrical that means there is some component of angulation of the fibula which has tilted the talus in downward direction so what should be done to avoid such situations so this is example there is comminuted fracture of lateral malleus here which is trans syndesmotic and there is comminuted fracture of medial malleus here now what should we do so the problem here is not the order of fixation that means what to fix first you can fix anything first but the most important thing that needs to be done in these fractures is to stabilize and reduce each fragment first that means you have to get a good picture of mortise 
once you have provisionally stabilized the fragments with few KYS and use small KYS that will not hinder your implant positioning. In this picture, you can see we have stabilized the lateral mellulus and medium mellulus both after getting a good reduction. Now you see the ankle mortis is uniform. And then the order of fixation can be decided according to the complexity of the fracture pattern. Suppose if medium mellulus is simple, you should fix a simple fracture first. We'll be able to restore anatomy properly when the fracture is simple. If you try to fix a comminuted fracture first, then definitely you can add to some malalignment. If you have fixed the comminuted fracture first in a malaligned manner, that means there will be chances of displacement of the anatomical fragment also. Now in this example, you see there is medium mellus fracture and lateral mellus fracture. The lateral mellus fracture is comminuted when we have provisionally stabilized both these fractures using 1 mm KYS and the ankle mortis now appears to be uniform. Now once we are placing the fibular plate, anatomical fibular locking plate, there is slight increase in the medial joint space. That means there is increased angulation of the plate here, which when positioning leads to opening up here. You see there was no opening here, but here it is quite visible. You see there is some opening of the fracture fragment here, or probably the distal fragment is probably taking shape of the plate. That's why there is some tilt of the talus downward. Now what we have done, we have slightly reduced the angulation of plate here to avoid this complication. Now once we have done that, you see there is improvement in the medial joint clear space and the mortis appears to be uniform. Now once we have fixed this part, letter column, then we can fix the medial mellus. So these small K wires, they can reduce the fragments first and then the plates or screws can be placed while keeping the mortis stable on both medial and lateral side. So we have to position the fibular plate on the surface and once the cortical screw is tightened, we have to see whether the fit of the plate is appropriate or not. And if the fibular plate is adding angulation to the lateral mellulus, which would be appreciable when there is distortion of the joint space here, then we have to remold the plate to restore the anatomy properly. So if there is increased angulation, we have to reduce the angulation of the plate because the morphology of the lateral mellulus may not be uniform in all the patients. So now once you have fixed both medial and lateral mellus, you have to check for the syndesmotic modding instability by external rotation stress or using hook test in which you can pull the lateral mellus laterally to see whether there is increase in this syndesmotic space or the increase in the medial clear space. So in that scenario, you need to put a syndesmotic screw. So always be aware that you need some additional space here in the plate to put the syndesmotic screw. If you use a short plate which is ending up here, you will not be able to put additional screw in this zone. So always be aware, whenever you are fixing medullar fractures, keep space for the syndesmotic screw just to be on safer side. Thank you.